Now, going over to the culture part of the podcast, you have Bud Light Sheriff ad flops with less than 200 likes out of 150,000 views, which means even the people who work at Bud Light don't like it or their family members didn't take the light. They, they, they don't even like it. Because presumably, Bud Light still has more than 200 employees. And I'm obviously joking. They have thousands of employees still. They're still a huge multinational corporation. They own 40 brands in the brewing industry. But... I don't know if they, the, do the employees there just not use social media? Like how, they could fix this problem by just asking friends and family to start liking these comments. That, you could argue that's artificially skewing those numbers, certainly that you could argue that. But in terms of the optics of having such a terrible like ratio, and again, we'll see how many, we'll dive in to see how much they're censoring as well, since that was one way they were silencing all the critics a couple of months ago. They even banned my profile for having audacity of saying simply responding to a post of theirs saying thank you for reminding me to buy yangling and I had a picture of a case of yangling bottles and a case of yangling cans on my interview podcast table i didn't swear at the company i didn't say anything pejorative about them i simply said thanks for reminding me to buy the competition that little thing was enough for them to get me they, they banned my profile on the twitter so now if i want to see these bud light posts and hurt my eyes granted it's still not as dangerous or as deplorable as actually drinking the product in and of itself but I actually have to use my podcast Twitter handle at the topping show to actually view these. And interestingly enough, that's the YouTube channel that critiques them, but they didn't, they didn't ban that profile, interestingly enough. So without further ado, it looks like it's about eight seconds long. Someone's opened up a can of Bud Light. Well, I guess, and again, this is a couple of days ago, so the reference of them saying tomorrow, I know it's a little outdated, but the Bud Light team on this tweet, or post, whatever you want to call it these days, they say, quote, and his name is dot, 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 tomorrow, 12, 1, 23. And it's a picture, oh, we'll, put, we'll play this terrible audio in a second here. So it's a gentleman, well, I'm sorry about the light, I don't want to be, I don't want to judge too harshly, it is a, a human with hands, and they appear to be opening up a can of Bud Light. That's the laziest thing I've ever seen in my life. So traditionally, when you see the old cool, well, I always thought this was a cool trick when I was a kid and watching the, the tube TV as a youngster, but traditionally in a bar, one of the neat, it's not even if it's considered a trick, but the bartender will slide a beer like all the way across the bar table and they'll catch it or they'll, they'll stop it with their hand. They'll, you know, they'll receive the beer. And yet in this one, I, again, maybe, again, maybe I, I assume the person opening it up was a man. I subsequently don't think so. It wasn't even a foot. So they, they pushed this beer and it went about a foot. Pathetic to say the least. I don't know how little this person's muscle mass is. Granted, they're drinking Bud Light, so presumably probably not the most strength of a person, perhaps. So they have the Bud Light slide across the bar, then they have a, a cowboy hat with the Bud Light logo on the hat medallion, like the, the star that you see that a sheriff would wear. And I don't this is not, is not, I thought it might be, it's not sponsored by Brokeback Mountain. I thought it, interest. I thought that would be a good product tie-in. But interestingly enough, that's not. And again, it got less than 200 likes in a couple days. It's not like I did this, oh yeah, within two seconds it got less than 200 likes. Well, of course, you know, it takes more than a couple seconds unless you're some popular person like Dwayne The Rock Johnson or something like that, hundreds of millions of followers. But no, a couple days, still got less than 200 likes. Out of 151,000 views, that's almost, how improbable is that? So specifically, you got 191, let's see here. And then we, I go, uh, public schools are all-time low in you know, math, science, history. Heck, the HCT scores are at 32 year low in the United States. And yet the teachers unions say they all deserve more money. Interesting idea. Well, we're going to do a little bit of math here today and add more value than not all, but some public schools in the United States. I'm also not going to indoctrinate you into your bedroom ideas. That should be your own personal concerns. Now, 191 people like this. So we're going to divide that by 151,500. Now that gives us a number of 0 0.00126. However, we're going to multiply it and turn it into a percentage. 
So we're going to multiply that by 100. So that gives us a percentage of 0 0.126. Or if you feel so inclined, we can round up 0.13% of people who saw this liked it. Also known as a terrible ratio to say the least. And let's go ahead and dive into the comments. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe everyone's forgiven Bud Light and they love the brand again. I mean, statistically speaking, not a lot of people actually love the actual post, but maybe the comments will be all supportive and they'll be appreciative of all the things Bud Light's doing. I mean, if I were a gambling man, I'd say probably not. Let's dive in and find out. I'll be damned. A positive response? Mark this day in the calendar, folks. This may... It's not... A, well, it may be a first in the past nine months. Someone by the name of Greg L. Simmons says, quote, The Bud Light guy in 1982. It looks like maybe that's him standing in front of an old... Yeah, it looks like a 1982 little van... It has the Budweiser, well, that's awkwardly. It does sound better marketing-wise Bud Light versus Budweiser Light. Nevertheless, the van actually has a picture of the logo being Budweiser Light. And that got 18 likes. So let's dive in this profile and see if it's real. This person does have 999 followers. Not to brag, but I got about 230. But mine are the best, bar none. Quality over quantity, of course. So he's got 999 followers, joined in 2021. He reposted some stuff by Bud Light. I'll be damned. Interesting. It looks like he is, I don't know if he, I can only assume he owns the, what the hell, a Jayhawk. I know a Jay, but he's not a Hawk. It looks like it's a Kansas University sports balls team. I don't know if he owns that team. Probably not. Maybe not. So he probably doesn't own the team, but every, yeah, every single post, he's posting hundreds, yeah, I was say not hundreds, but dozens and dozens of times for the Kansas Blue Jays. Where do they call their sports balls team? So he's a big sports balls fan. So. And maybe even a Bud Light driver, if that's him driving in 1980s. I wonder what his profile says for a job. Uh, oh, okay. At least he's pretty transparent. So his profile actually says, again, this is hashtag or at sign Greg Simmons GLS. Kansas Jayhawk football fan, old Bud fan, KC Chiefs fan, KC Royals fan, sporting KC fan, KC current man, not a coach for a KU. All right. A real positive response. I I didn't think I'd see it again in my lifetime, folks. I I'm not going to lie. Well, let's go and continue. Someone by the name of Christina Scheinberger simply just responded with a emoji of a beer. She does look inebriated in her profile. Now, she has 408 followers, joined in 2016, so it's not like they just joined overnight and made this profile to praise Bud Light. And she is uh, mentally vacuous, to say the least. Er, not every, but actually, yeah, every one of her responses or posts that she's made is either is all the BS reposts where you say, repost and you could win $100, or I'm sending away a gift card to the first person. Who's... It's all crap. Mentally vacuous, to say the least. I'm not surprised she did that. And of course, she's also re done a lot of reposts for Bud Light for all the free promos where you could win their beer, which, incidentally enough, is a great real world example. Again, we talk in the theories all the time. It's a great real world example of how you can be a winner and a loser at the same time if you were to, in fact, win a case of free Bud Light with their Bud Light sweepstakes. Because again, I can't help but think you wouldn't want to drink it in public out of fear of being socially ostracized with anyone, you know. So you wouldn't drink it in public. I mean, I, I, I've debated what would I do if I was bored enough or desperate enough to actually join one of the contests. And then what would I do if I won a case of Bud Light? I certainly couldn't actually give it to someone who's coming on for a podcast interview because the, the purpose of a podcast interview is to actually talk with someone, have a good conversation. If they were to drink the Bud Light, their tongue would become so viscerally shriveled and disgusted, they would either throw up on the show or be so viscerally disgusted by the fact that I would give them such a product that they would never want to talk to me again. So I couldn't certainly couldn't use it for podcast interviews. I suppose I could perhaps use it as a cleaning solvent. I mean, a lot of people forget that Listerine 
was originally invented to clean bathroom floors, now we use it to clean our teeth and our mouths. Perhaps we can do the inverse with Bud Light, where it was at one point, you know, invented for people to drink copious amounts of alcohol during sports balls events and fraternity events. Perhaps we could use it to clean, although I believe it is still a fairly sticky substance, so that idea is out. But if I were to win a case of Bud Light now, and I, I'm just spitballing here, folks. Let's see, you couldn't use it as a cleaning solvent. That idea is out, unfortunately. We've already said how we could use it for target practice, filling potholes, using it as ballast if you're in a hot air balloonist. What else could you use it for? I suppose, hmm, could it, how could, what would you use it? Couldn't use it in food. You don't want the food to go bad. Couldn't really, I mean, it's not, yeah, we already, yeah. You could donate it to the military to use for torture, but I think that might be it very well, it might be against the U.S. Constitution, the Geneva Convention, you know, cruel and unusual punishment. If you were to force someone to drink a Bud Light if they were a prisoner or a terror, possible suspected terrorist, uh, I think the American public wouldn't stand for that. that that'd be a war crime in, in many instances, in many countries, I believe. You could perhaps, I mean, there's the aluminum can. Aluminum is infinitely recyclable. But what would you do with the Bud Light? You could use it as a weed killer, perhaps, if you have some weeds on your lawn. Hmm. I'm trying to think, what else could you use it for? Hmm. I just thought it right here and now, folks. Now, one of the biggest issues, especially these days, is defending your home from evil perpetrators. And very similar to scarecrows, you could perhaps ward off people who have a modicum of good beer taste. If you were to take the Bud Light and pour it around your house perimeter, the smell that would come from it would perhaps be so viscerally disgusting, every time someone came to your property, they'd smell it and immediately turn around and go back. That very well might be one of the most legitimate things you could do if you were to win a case of free Bud Light. Let me know in the comments what you would do. It would be fast to hear what you would have to say in regards to if you won the case of Bud Light, what would you do? Now, ADHD aside, we'll go back into the comments section. Hi Dad Soup says, quote, if it isn't hashtag Shane Gillis, you screwed up, unquote. I got 148 likes. And yeah, that should have been their spokesperson. I, there's a rumor that's going to be a sports balls player, of course. But Shane Gillis is an extremely popular stand-up comic, and he still drinks Bud Light. And Shane, he's very good at making fun of people on the left and the right, politically speaking. So he's a, not as controversial. He's controversial, don't get me wrong, because he actually is a comedian. He says funny things. But he makes fun of everyone equally. So I think the overall audience for Shane Gillis is larger than other comedians who kind of find a niche and stick with it. So I actually think that would be a good idea for Bud Light to do. That being said, it's a good idea, so they probably won't do it. We all know what their marketing department does, or rather does not anymore. Conservative Rebel says, quote, Boycott, his name is Boycott, unquote. Got 23 likes. King Midas says, quote, Transcena, unquote, gained 41 likes. Except John Cena. That's a good word pun. I'll go with it. Transcena. Interesting. CM simply says, this is gay, unquote, gained 13 likes. John Michael Gibson says, quote, we don't want your beer, your brand, or your sheriff. You are marketing to someone else. His name, nobody I know or want to meet, unquote. Gained three likes. Someone simply just drone pro, Simply just did a emoji of fecal material. They got five likes. They didn't even have to say anything. Another shout out to Shane Gillis. This comes from Alexander. Alexander says, quote, The only road to redemption involves St. Gilly. Hashtag Shane Gillis. He's done more for your brand than anyone on your marketing, on your genius marketing team can imagine. Time to cut him a check. Unquote. Getting 35 likes. Whale Jones, below them, also similar condolences. This person says, quote, if it's not Shane Gills, who cares? Getting 30 likes. Red Adam says, quote, did you just assume them, they's gender? Unquote, getting 18 likes. Greaseman, 2022, says, quote, is it RuPaul? Unquote, getting 12 likes, who is not Rand Paul. I thought it was the brilliant, uh, I, believe, I, I appreciate the libertarian candidate, Rand Paul, but no, the RuPaul is actually the, what is it, the trans crossdresser? It's a TV show. Or more more accurately, probably is a streaming show. 
Stone Cold Steve, Stone Cold Steve Autism said, quote, the only man that can save Bud Light in his picture of Shane Gillis drinking Bud Light, or rather a GIF, or a GIF, as you youth probably say. Maybe? Probably? Maybe not. That got 83 likes. Another GIF of Shane Gillis getting 36 likes. Uncle Tom Hawk says, quote, Shane the Big Cajona Gillis, unquote, getting 33 likes. Again, if, let's see. I'm actually surprised they're not censoring all these suggestions from actually hire someone like Shane Gillis. An overwhelming majority of people just bringing up, I'm scrolling through more and more, a lot of it is Shane Gillis. A lot of them still making fun of them with uh, Dylan Mulvaney. Scotty Benny says, quote, Dylan M, the Bud Light Sheriff now, unquote, getting two likes. Curran Jean Pierre White House Parody says, quote, thanks Bud Light so brave. And it's a video clip of Dylan Mulvaney holding an award, getting three likes. Darren Constantine says, quote, Elliot Page, unquote, getting one like. Blue C. Ledge says, quote, just give up, your brain is dead, unquote, getting four likes. So interestingly enough, let's see, I'm scrolling, 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 scrolling. Someone responded with a shelf case of beer at Walmart, and the price had been photoshopped, and it just says, just take them. And that got 32 likes. Which is, interestingly enough, I can't help but notice the, the level or the number of beer when you go to the big box bar these days for Bud Light. I can't help but notice a lot of consistency. It's not, it still isn't moving too much. It's kind of the same amount of inventory as opposed to other brands. I see them moving at much higher frequency. But that's just me. So it'll be interesting to see, again, if Bud Light was smart. I don't think they are. But again, this isn't as harsh a critique as usual. Yes, there are some comments saying, hey, you messed up, calling them out for their myriad of ineptitudes. There are many. But they're actually giving constructive feedback. They're telling Bud Light what to do right now. Pay Shane Gillis. Again, Shane Gillis is a huge, successful stand-up comedian. And he's on Joe Rogan all the time, the most successful podcast in history. He's already drinking Bud Light on this podcast. Obviously, he's a fan of the product. He likes to taste somehow. Why not just come and check? If you want to turn your marketing kit, they're giving you the formula right now to turn around the ship. So it'll be interesting to see, does Bud Light have a modicum of intelligence? Because again, if I was in charge of the marketing department, I would say, hey, here's a stand-up comedian. He's already drinking our iconic blue can on all these shows with Joe Rogan, the biggest podcast ever. He's, our fans, the people in the comments are saying, hey, there's someone who already drinks your product. They like, the people like him. If they don't cut this guy a check or just make him official, like, Again, that press, I guess, not going to be as big as a business blunder as hiring Dylan Mulvaney and giving this person $185,000 for a couple of pictures to be a brand ambassador or whatever you want to call it, a campaign. But if they don't hire Shane, that is one of the dumbest things they could probably do in terms of a lack of action. There's a lot of things where you make dumb, thing, dumb things happen in life because you choose to take an action, such as hiring Dylan Mulvaney for $185,000 for like two or three pictures. But in this case, if they don't do it, it's just, just ridiculous. And perhaps we'll add this to the ever-increasing section of the show called the Business Blunder of the Day. Obviously, there's a lot of material with Bud Light. I'm calling it, they're on track to get the Business Blunder of the Year. Let me know in the comments if you think that should be an award. There are many contenders with Disney continu continuing to lose billions of dollars, their, uh, dollars on their films. But, as I always say, time shall tell. Thank you again, everyone, for taking the time to tune in to get, again today. We're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of December. So, if you click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, if you can leave a comment, I would greatly appreciate it as well as I always want to get more feedback and how we can make the show better and better and better. Also, don't forget, you can also leave a thumbs up. That helps with the algorithm and might get it shared to more people, which is also greatly appreciated. Lastly, don't forget to take time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone, just stay safe and fight the good fight.